Yeah, we're going to see if Visa has an index to show the greatest Facebook marketplace swap meet ever when this bubble pops. <laughs> what do you mean? Um, I, I just have, let's maybe the bubble doesn't pop. It's a theory you and I have been talking about are, are things that I've at least seen in person, friends and family that everyone kind of took that unemployment money. And even the people that were working, um, a lot of them just chose not to pay their rent or in their mortgages or in their school loans because they didn't have to. And that went and bought stuff came. Mm -hmm. it, uh, the, I mean, the smart people put it in savings accounts and you saw savings accounts rise. And then we saw everyone else run the target and Amazon and my joke about you see like I feel like when I drive around people have twice as much trash as I used to it's people that just bought so much shit we uh we're become hoarders man um we're uh we're nothing but hoarders right now because we didn't take that money and, and do a lot of productive shit we just bought and bought and bought yeah. so back to we had the episode about boats and RVs and you couldn't find boats and RVs last year and even the spring jet skis sold out yeah. um yeah I know what happens I've been through three recessions the people that can afford shit sit around and go what recession and then everyone else starts selling stuff so I, I just wonder like I'm not even on Facebook but that thought of like what you're gonna have this giant swap meet online on Craigslist and and uh Facebook if you're from Detroit uh from years ago, you know a place called Gibraltar Tr Trade Center, where it was the size of a Home Depot, but these little independent retailers could sell shit, and you could go in and buy stuff, make deals. It's going to be that cool. on steroids when the market crashes, the everything bubble crashes, and then uh, you got to start paying for all this stuff. So what's the first thing to go, Kane? Are you going to pay your house or pay your RV payment? <laughs> I'll buy RV. <laughs> Yeah, because you're going to live in that RV because you're going to lose your house. Uh, or, um, or that. You know, or do you want to keep your car or your jet skis? Pick one. I just, yeah. <clears throat> to back up that, after we launched that episode, I, I had a message sent to me after someone listened to it. Well, I'm just going to read you really quick mm -hmm. what they wrote. And it looks like they're doing talk to text, so the, the English is a little messed up. So don't, uh, don't, don't ding them on this one. And I'm going to be reading really fast. But here we go. I know someone whose husband and her still worked, but didn't pay their mortgage because they didn't have to. Now, Kane, we know people like that. Um, mm -hmm. They spent the money on RVs and other shit. They are now trying to figure out how to come up with their back payments before the end of the mortgage freeze so they can then turn around and pull out an equity loan to pay off some of the things that can't be repossessed that they financed. <laughs> This is where I often say like the idea of universal basic income is interesting and giving people more money. It's a nice thought to think where I came from came. We, we talked about that very few people took the extra money they got and made their life better or helped their kids or paid off bills. They went and bought stupid shit. Mm -hmm. um, great in theory doesn't always work that way. What, what did we find out last year? What happened? People got extra money through unemployment and stimulus. They had the option not to pay their rent, school loans, mortgages. And uh, even if they're working, they just chose not to. And it's not like they decided to do, get their life in a better spot, can't like pay down that credit card. Yeah. They just went and bought more shit. And this is the thing you can't help that percentage of people, which is a large percentage, come to find out. There's 11 million people facing eviction right now, I think, on rental properties. Can't if they were getting the, the fat unemployment. Why didn't, why didn't they pay their rent? You know, that's not going to pop up in the news. No, no one's going to talk about that. So you wonder, you didn't, you no longer wonder why we're sold out of jet skis and RVs and boats and why the housing market boomed and why all of a sudden you've seen people taking trips to Hawaii and Bali and shit that, you know, they're not rolling like that. <laughs> but it's like, well, yeah, they thought this, this thing was never going to end. So they continue with their message. So they're now talking about having to unload one or two of their items to cover everything in addition to having student loans. So they're going to have to sell some of their shit, Kane. Maybe it's their RV or their, all this other crap they bought. They're going to have to sell it because they bought it under the pretense that I'm not going to have to pay my mortgage for a while. Maybe the government's going to bail me out. Um, to continue the quote, 
The crazy part is they both have really well-paying jobs. They didn't have to struggle. It's just that they didn't want to pay their mortgage and they bought a bunch of new stuff. That's kind of where we're at right now. Yeah. People, uh, I, I got so many stories, you know, I'm, I mentor people. Services business and it helps people, you know, get better careers and make move, career moves. And, you know, one of those thoughts is, uh, if you're in an area, I have family members that I've had this discussion with every year for 20 years that they're not in the most desirable areas. And I'm like, fucking move. Okay, that's what I did. Yeah. I, I was a teenager. As soon as I got my first good paying tech job, I got the hell out of where I was because where I was did not offer me any economic opportunity unless I wanted to drive an hour plus every day. Um, I knew that wasn't going to give me what I needed to. So save some money up and I, I got the hell out of there. So my, my saying of, you heard it on other episodes, I wanted to move to a place that had more banks and liquor stores. Mm -hmm. Same conversation yeah. I have with people and they they still they tell you it's, it costs too much to move the the moving truck the first month security deposit all these things and why they can't move well last year they could have done that they got stimulus money they got fat unemployment money well okay and i'll tell you what they, they still haven't moved and they're somehow in more debt than they were last year even though they made more money than ever last year yeah i just we see where this is going and I'm sitting around like, if you got a bunch of cash right now and you want to buy something, just wait. If, <laughs> if the market doesn't crash and oh, well, you buy it anyways. But if you want to buy jet skis or cars or RV, maybe a house, maybe jewelry, you know how much shit's probably going to come on the market as soon <laughs> as, as the, the things start to hit. Um, I mean, you're probably like four years old when 2008 came around, but... <laughs> when the, <laughs> it's uh when the crash happened there was so many we buy gold signs it was hilarious king you couldn't drive anywhere that was the biggest thing so everyone was kind of selling their gold if you had a gold necklace gold rings gold brace because people had to sell their shit to get cash when the market was really bad do you think that's not going to happen again except this is gonna, uh, this is on steroids um, but right there is a perfect example of everything that we just talked about. We get a comment on one of our uh, videos that this is exactly what people did. You you had the job and you just chose not to pay your rent. Can that's goddamn stupid? Yeah, stupidity at the at the highest level. It was a you know other episode we talked about. I saw a video somewhere on YouTube where the uh, the landlord wasn't trying to sue for eviction. He was just trying to get his money. Because he's like, I know this guy goes to work every day, but he's not paying his rent. That's not how it was supposed to work, Kane. If you were struggling, yeah. then that's what those programs were for. And you realize people people kept working and then chose not to pay the rent and pay their school loans. So when we got to go back to being adults and paying our rent and our mortgages and our school loans, and that money stops going into the economy, these bubbles in. And then if there's any kind of any kind of pullback to go with that, then all that shit's going to come on the market and go for sale. And it just, it's going to be a good time to be on Craigslist. If you were smart with your money in the last couple of years, because you're probably going to be able to go out and buy some really nice shit for really good prices. Um, when you think about your network, James, what, or like what ratio do you think, uh, is it of people that were clever during the last 18 months? And then that were, that went kind of spend heavy in the last 18 months. I mean, it depends. I got, I got like different circles that I kind of yeah. think of in my very close circle, right? These are people that, um, the people I want to surround myself with, uh, the people that are making moves, they make good decisions. Um, they didn't, none of them overspent Kane. Yeah. None of them really, you know, a couple of people took vacations, which is normal. They got kids and shit. None of them went blockers and went and bought a bunch of stuff. <laughs> They kind of stayed the course. They they kept a lot of money in the market. They wrote, I mean, how much money did someone make from just, if you bought somewhere last summer after the market crashed, between then and when it went up to 35000 yeah, you know how much fucking money people made? Yeah. Some people dub doubled their money plus if you're savvy. Imagine 100% plus returns in 12 months. 
Um, that's how those people were thinking. So for the most part, people are making business moves that made sense, but I didn't really see anyone over consuming that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, now there's other people in my life. Um, there's, you know, friends and they got kids that I mentor and I got, I got to listen to some of their bullshit. <laughs> um, <laughs> I will say there's quite a few people that just didn't, didn't make a lot of smart moves. And, uh, I think these are some of the people we're talking about right now. Not everyone did that, but you definitely seen there was a lot of opportunity in the last 18 months during this chaos for people to make some uh, life improvements. Because a lot of them kind of got a windfall of cash. And the problem is you give people money that don't know how to manage money, and this is what you got. Yeah. Um, and that's the concerning part because they're usually the people that don't have a way out. They can't like work. I always say like a lot of the financial, you can work your way out of it if you make enough money. Then they can't. Once that hole's dug, it's dug. And it just usually mm -hmm. gets deeper. And uh, the weird part is it's like quicksand. Okay, it's almost like the more you fight your way out of it, the more you fucking sink. And I just, uh, you couldn't get through to those people last year. I tried giving that, that, advice, that advice to some people. And uh, I, d I just feel like they thought the government was either going to bail them out and maybe they still will. But no matter what, Kane, you're still going to have to eventually pay your rent. Yeah, right. If uh, if you owe 20 grand in back rent and the government decides to wipe it out, you're still going to have to go back to paying your rent and your school loans. And if you got a jet ski payment and a, a second car payment, well, now what? It's uh, no one thought about all that shit. So... Maybe there's a whole bunch of bankruptcies coming we don't know about. Uh, good just, point. Uh, yeah. But you know what's going to happen then? And the banks, you know, how did the, how did the banks get their money back? Well, then they're, they're going to start charging everyone else who actually pays their bills more money. Um, oh shit! There's an article out there about uh, you know rents already going up astronomical right now. Oh mm -hmm. well, yeah, because the people who actually pay their rent, they're going to have to go pay for the people who didn't pay their the rent. That's just how it works. So yeah. it's like the better the when you continue to make good decisions, the more you get penalized in this world. Um, if you like work hard and you make more money, you got to pay more taxes. If you actually pay your bills and, and you pay your rent on time, you, you're going to get stuck for paying for the rent for the people who don't pay the rent. Not that they couldn't pay the rent, can they? Got a bunch of money from the government. Yeah, and they just chose. These people right here just got to think. They chose not to pay their mortgage because they wanted to buy all this shit. And then uh, the people who do the right thing and pay their bills and work hard, they get stuck with the tab. Yeah, that that that's how this class warfare kind of gets you know created. And uh, you can see where some people would be better. Kid, if you got up, well, you did. I did. We all got up every day for the last eighteen months during COVID and busted our ass. And then it's like, well, you're going to be on the hook for someone who was sitting there collecting money and buying RVs and then pay the rent. I, uh, yeah, it kind of leaves some people bitter. We will we will continue to see the, the, the divide to grow. Yeah. And that just it it ends up being class warfare because you know at some point you can only have everyone like twenty percent can't carry eighty percent. That makes any sense. <laughs> Like yeah. We need every every. We're seeing that now with the overconsumption of goods. We have a lot of people that are consuming shit, and they're not even um, contributing to society. They're not making sure that semi truck is driven. They're not working in the, the food store, the stock shelves. It's at some point if we don't have people working, and we're overconsuming, we start running out of shit. And uh, I think one of the episodes we're going to do here shortly is one about how why is there low inventory everywhere. Yeah. Well, it's it's one of those things that I feel, um, you know, argument I got on LinkedIn years ago. That's why I don't even post on LinkedIn anymore. Twenty five thousand followers, I don't even bother posting on LinkedIn. They just the echo chamber. But they, I was like, they needed a job, and I'm like, oh, go drive a semi truck. They're paying fifty five grand right now, and I got lit up for that game. That's not a it's that's a meaningless job, and it's a tra it's a tra crap crappy wow. job, and all this stuff. I'm like, two thoughts. One, you're sitting at home making no money right now. And I think you have you have a fiduciary duty to provide for yourself. And the second thought is you want to live in a world where you benefit 
from someone moving those goods on the truck, but you think you're too good to do that job. And if that doesn't sum up society right now. Oh, yeah. Um, you you don't want to work at the fast food joint, but you want to be able to go to the fast food joint. I think that's bullshit. That, that gets hypocrisy at the highest fucking level, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, we're going to continue to see, as long as we keep consuming, if this plug's not pulled, and we have people not contributing to society, at some point there's not enough people to keep the cogs in the machine going, right? Yep. And I think we're starting to see that. So we did, and then at the end of the day, we'll we'll try to point and figure out why everybody is angry, but we did this to ourselves and we've seen it coming. We've seen it coming, but we're not gonna do a goddamn thing about it, right? No, it's absolutely not. The yep. the signs in the window keep going from thirteen to fourteen to fifteen to sixteen to seventeen dollars an hour. I know people trying to pay twenty bucks an hour to work in uh QSR places right now. They can't get an applicant, King. That's yeah, that's that's fucking singular. <laughs> applicant. <laughs> um, it's oh, um I was talking to someone that's a first generation immigrant they're like and you see these signs around here like 17 bucks an hour to, to move boxes around a warehouse it's like holy shit if i could come to this country back then and made you know that's like 35 grand a year with benefits yeah their eyes are like wide open i mean they're in a much better position now they've been busting their ass here for 20 years but the thought that anybody like out of high school right now could go work a job and make that kind of money was really fucking exciting to them problem is most people aren't excited for that right now yeah, it's really fascinating times. And it, the thing that always gets me is how quickly we came it. Like, all it took was that devastating pandemic. But it, to get to this stage was fast. It didn't take much to kind of ruin the the overall economy. What have you thought that, like, you knew the world was changing and at times for the better, but I think equally for the worse at the same time. Did you think it would have, it would have fell apart this fast, though? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And uh, you, you know, I, I, I think my adult life, you know, you lived through part of the 90s as an adult, the 2000s. And I should, I just watched a documentary on Woodstock 99 and what a shit show that was. And, um, you know, you, you, you kind of catch little glimpses of how people were 2000, 2005, 2010 after the crash. And, you know, you know the world's changing and there's a lot of improvements. But, when you watch how like how fast shit really fell apart, I, I guess what we found out is I often say that we continue every year to just get more narcissistic. Mm -hmm. I've never seen so many people just so consumed with themselves. Every year it gets worse, and uh, I know it's like oh you're just getting old and old people blame the younger generations. I mean that's not the case because there is some great people coming up in the younger generations, but the amount of people you run into now that are just so consumed with themselves. They really think everything's about them. Like it, it rained today and they knew, they knew I wanted to go for a bike ride today. So it rained just because of my <laughs> out of here, right? <laughs> and uh, that is kind of where we're at as a world right now. And then on top of that, the selfishness oh. is that I've never seen so many selfish people. I, I'm really starting to believe, give me 24 more months, no one will care about anyone but themselves. And I just, we've seen that explode in the last 18 months. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not, a, it's not a good sign. For, uh, it, it fell apart much faster than I think many people thought it would. But yeah. until then, I'm going to be sitting around waiting for this fucking giant swap meet to happen. <laughs> um, oh, get dear. some, uh, yeah. get some, get some Venmo and some Bitcoin ready to fire off. And, um, I, I knew people like 2008 that you know, if you're looking for boats, smaller boats, and jet skis and RVs and shit, car, classic cars, that type of stuff, they would just go driving around with a stack of cash in in their car. Because, you know, people will park their cars in uh, parking lots on major roads or you just go drive around the country and they'll put their shit for sale. Like they'll pull their two jet skis up by the road, put a for sale sign in it. Um, they'll, they'll just fucking put a wad of cash in their car and they'll drive around looking for shit. And you roll up on those people and it's, you know, you make them an offer. It's cash, sign title, you tow that shit away. Um, that was 2008, 2009. And I, I got to imagine... Based on that comment I just read, that those days are coming again soon. Kane, maybe yeah. you're going to be able to get that 
that uh, <laughs> co- Coke bezel roly you want for about oh, you know thirty two hundred here in a minute. Hey, nice. What was that? Uh, the you called the Porsche and the Rolex. That was a. Uh, what did you call that? The I'm getting wealthy starter kit. <laughs> that's the starter kit. Yeah, that's right. That's what I'm. Problem is, yeah, you, know, you want one of those classic Porsches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, air cooled. It's probably those probably aren't going to go down in value. <laughs> because those those are the guys that when the recession happens they're like what recession what are you talking, talking about right now yeah yeah, yeah. they got so much money that they don't they don't feel these blips so you might be able to get yourself a 2007 um, cayenne or something for price <laughs> yeah i got a stupid grin on my face right now yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right i ain't got much more for this one so right. i'll catch Later. you